My name is Linda Carabaris, and welcome to my kitchen. I'm very excited to be doing my first cooking show in the Attleboro area. And what I'd like to accomplish on this program is making fun, easy dishes, desserts, snacks uh, that you'll hopefully try at home. And I want you to be the beneficiary of my recent uh, cooking education at Johnson & Wales University. I just graduated in May with a degree in food and beverage management. Also, I've taken many classes over the years in cooking, and I love to cook and entertain at home. So, at the end of the program, what I'm going to do is I'll give you an email address, and I would love to hear your feedback and any tips you can give me, and that's how I learn a lot of, of my cooking techniques also. And I just want to have fun on the program and uh, teach you how to cook some basic things and also help you learn some different cooking techniques. So uh, let's start cooking. I figured for my first program I would do fast and easy quesadillas. And I learned the method I'm going to show you I learned a couple years ago when I was beginning my program at Johnson & Wales. And I love quesadillas because they're great as a snack, terrific as an appetizer, and you can pair them up with a soup and salad and have a complete meal for lunch or dinner. Also, you can create a theme with the quesadillas if you're going to do a Mexican-themed dinner, and I'll show you what I actually did at one of my parties with that theme. So the quesadillas are very versatile. I'm also going to show you how you can put, they're, they're perfect for making ahead of time, and I'm going to show you how you can freeze them and then just reheat them in the oven in seven minutes and they'll be good to go. Also, for the big game, these are perfect party food for having company at your house and for watching that special sporting event. First thing I'd like to explain, if you've never seen one of these, is I want to uh, talk to you about this burner. Now, this particular one I got at Benny's, but I'm sure you can pick these up at a number of different stores. And uh, I like this because it actually comes with a neat carrying case, which I'll show you. And isn't that great? I mean, you can take this, travel anywhere with it. You can have it uh, picnic. I like this where you can use it on the center island. Um, you can use it outside. It's just a, a great piece of equipment to have. And it is a little bit different from a camping stove in that most of the camping stoves that I've seen are hinged in the back. This is kind of nice because it's, it's free all around it, so you can really set it up anywhere and be unencumbered. Uh, I'll show you how it works. This is butane fuel. So you get your can of butane. It fits right in there. It's got a notch on the top of the can. Just fit it in this compartment. There's an arrow that shows you where to fit it in on the notch. Close the lid, clamp that down, and it's got a dial just like on your stove, and it works the same way as a gas stove. There you go. Isn't that nice? So now we're ready to go. Okay, now the first thing I've done here, I've laid out all the equipment and my ingredients. And in cooking school, this is called mise en place, which means everything in its place. And what I like to, why I like to do this is because, you know, at least this way you make sure you have all your ingredients, you've got all your equipment out here, and you're ready to go, and it just makes things so much easier and smoother when you're in the kitchen. So the first thing I'd like to do is explain each one of the ingredients that we're going to use for the quesadillas. Uh, first and foremost, most important, this is lavash bread. Now, this particular brand I really like a lot, and it's the Bogosian Valley bread. And it comes in the plain flour and the tomato basil. And that's what makes quesadillas fun also. You can mix them up and you can, you know, the, the different colors will look very nice on the plate. The other thing I like about using lavash bread is that look at how nice and pliable and flexible it is. And it's nice and thin. Now you might ask, well, can I use tortillas? Well, the tortillas are kind of thick because they're meant to hold heavier fillings. So, I mean, of course, if you have them in the house or you need to use up a couple, you can use them. But overall, this is going to be the best bet is using the lavash bread. So um, seek this out. Now, if you want to make these even healthier, 
th this particular company doesn't make uh, the multi-grain one, but Mission does, and they call them wraps, and it's the multi-grain wraps, and uh, this way it'll make it healthier, and it also gives it a little bit different texture. So if you like that grainy, kind of chewy texture, these are terrific. Also, where do you find these? At the deli, at, the, at your local grocery market. They're right there in front of the deli. So that's where you get the lavash bread. And also what I do when I pick up some packages, I pick up four or five packages, you can throw these right in the freezer. That way you always have them on hand. And what's great about them, you take out the package or you can even take out individual lavash bread. You put them on the counter, they, they're defrosted within a few minutes. So again, just throw those in the freezer and you're all set. You'll always have them on hand. Now, the next thing is your grated cheese. Now, I like to grate my own cheese for a couple of different reasons. I love to put together different cheese blends. This particular one is cheddar, and I had some smoked mozzarella, so I put that in there. Um, you can grate up the pepper jack cheese, which is terrific because it already has the hot pepper in it if you like it spicy. Um, also, the, you know, the, the, the grated cheeses are fine to use in the package, but uh, so if you really don't want to grate your own, you can, the, the shredded in the package is fine. But the other thing I like about this compared to the shredded in the package, this gives a better melt than the stuff in the package because the package stuff, they treat it with something so it doesn't all clump together. So that's what I like about grating my own also. It's a, it's a better melt. And again, the variety of different cheeses that you can mix together. And I just want to show you uh, this grater. I got this as a gift, but I'm sure you can probably get this at Walmart or Target or any number of stores. But I love this because, see, the top closes right on. So if you've got a few extra minutes, you pick up those blocks of cheese and you grate your own cheese blend. Then you just pull the top off, and it comes with a nice tight lid. You put that on there. Now, this will this will be fine in the refrigerator for two or three weeks, no problem. So you have a few extra minutes, then you can take your block cheese and grate it up. So there's the cheese. The next ingredient is cumin. Now, cumin is actually from a fruit of the parsley family. Um, it's a spice that used used... It's used extensively in Middle Eastern cooking, also in Mediterranean Asian cooking. And I would say it's kind of a nutty, peppery scent and flavor. And if you've never used this, please at least just try it, because especially in Mexican cooking, this is terrific. I think you'll really like this. So that's the cumin for our spice we're going to use today. And also our next ingredient is the green chilies. Now these are very mild because what I'm going to show you today are the most basic quesadillas. Certainly if you like more heat, then purchase the jalapenos, but I'm going to show you the mild, I'm going to make the quesadillas together with the mild green chilies. Now another tip I'd like to give you, the green chilies come already minced in a can. I don't get those because what happens, because they've been sitting in the liquid so long, they're very mushy, so make sure you buy the whole green chilies, and I'm going to show you how easy it is to cut these up. And scallions. So here's my scallion, and we're all set to go. We're ready to uh, assemble, well, assemble the quesadillas. But the first thing I'd like to show you is how to properly hold and cut with a knife because this is one of the things I learned in cooking school, and I remember with the grip I'm going to show you, I wish that I had learned this 30 years ago, because once I got used to this grip, which only took about a day, believe it or not, after incorrectly holding a knife all those years, it's just, you just have so much more control over the knife. And what you do is, here, I'm going to hold it in my left hand like this. You're a right-handed person. Just grip it like this. You want your thumb on this side of the blade, your forefinger on the other, and the rest of your fingers gripping the handle. And see how nice that is? That gives you a nice control over the knife. So again, hand over like this, thumb on this side of the blade, forefinger on the other, and 
just grip the rest of your fingers are gripping that handle and I'll tell you once you get used to this it, it will feel so natural and you'll just have so much better control over your knife the other thing that of course is important make sure your knives are always very sharp now that I've shown you the proper grip on a knife I'm going to cut the scallion we're going to cut this nice and thin and again if you were in a production kitchen speed would be a factor but you're not we're here to have fun and relax and it's all about technique so again what the, I learned this a long time ago but from a cooking show I think I saw on Food Network but anyway always keep your fingers curled under and your thumb behind your fingers like this this way you can't cut your fingers because the blade up here will always hit your knuckles so I'm going to keep my fingers curled like this and we will we'll start to cut the scallion nice and thin and again move the fingers just kind of inch them back just crawl back with the thumb and the fingers keep your thumb again don't let that thumb creep out ahead of the fingers that's how you're going to get cut see what I'm doing here the top of it's hitting my knuckles so it's nice and safe and we're going to cut this nice and thin these scallions let's put that in the dish I have here again I've got everything in its place right so I don't have to be hunting through the cabinets for bowls so there we go scallions are done now the whole green chili see how they come very nice just open it up like that Okay, now I'm going to cut nice little thin slivers, probably an eighth of an inch wide lengthwise. And again, see how I've got my fingers curled in. Okay, now I turn my board. I'm going to cut them the other way, crosswise probably you know again another eighth of an inch and now you have got diced green chili and it's not soggy and how long did that take maybe a minute there's our bowl and there's our chilies again back of the knife all right put that over here going to get rid of this board and now we are ready to assemble our quesadillas okay now we're ready to assemble our quesadillas first thing let me just turn on the burner and you know what just be conservative with this especially you just want to toast them so let's do a low flame a little bit of cooking spray now this is important just spray it in the pan I just wipe it out and around the sides with a paper towel all you want to do is lightly oil it because you want to toast these you don't want to fry them so don't throw in a big you know clump of butter or margarine that's all you want to do and again cooking spray or a little bit of oil just wipe it around the pan so it's a little bit oiled that's all you need to do let that pan heat up while we're assembling all right let's do a flour tortilla and a tomato one okay now watch what I do here start with your drier ingredients let's start with the cheese and I figured out that package of four quesadillas or four I'm sorry four pieces of lavash bread two ounces of cheese per lavash so it works out perfectly well you get an eight ounce block of cheese or eight ounces of shredded cheese we will do four lavash make four quesadillas so just spread the cheese like this on half and this is the method that I really love just on half right to the edge let's bring it to the edge okay again on half of the lavash bread okay 
make sure it gets right to the edge. Now we're going to take our cumin, just sprinkle the cumin on. Okay. Now scallions, and again, very lightly. Okay, I think what happens why people have been frustrated in the past making quesadillas is that they overload them with fillings. You don't want to do that. Just very lightly. Now there are green chilies. And again, whatever fillings that you're using, I would say other than the cheese and your spice, whatever spice, we're using cumin today, but if you use something else, I would keep the ingredients, the main ingredients, to no more than three. Because that's, again, you want to put a minimal amount of ingredients in these. So if you wanted to use diced chicken and caramelized onion with the scallions, do that. But again, very lightly like you see here. And you won't run into a problem. If you want to do more fillings, then just make some different quesadillas with three other different types of filling. All right, now I'm going to fold this over just like this and press it down. So you see what's going to, it, when the cheese melts, it's going to adhere nicely to both sides of the lavash bread. So that's another reason why you don't want to overload them. You need this cheese to stick to the top. So again, we've got... Now, this is the method that I really like. The easier to pick up, the rounded edge, let that conform to the rounded edge of the pan. So we put one in like that, the other in like that, right up against it. And see how that conforms nicely to the pan? And I know you've seen, you've seen quesadillas made before where they have one round and then they put the other round piece of bread over it and then it's just a real hassle to turn and it makes a mess. I like this method. It's only going to take a minute or two, so don't walk away from the stove during this part of the process. Also, the other thing, you want to make the quesadillas vegan. They make some nice soy cheeses now that melt nicely. Then you get the soy cheese. Now you've made vegan quesadillas. All right, let's check that. Oh, see, it's already toasting up. Okay, got another minute. All right, let's check these. I think they're going to be ready to turn. Oh, yeah, look at that. See how nice and toasted that is? That's what you want it to look at. And look at how easy it is to flip these. Just take them up on one side, flip them over, there you go. Another minute or two and I'm going to show you how to cut them. And we can cut these two different ways. I would say if you're using them for lunch or dinner or the guys during a game, you know, they like the bigger pieces I think, I would cut each one of these halves into quarters. If you're going to use them more as a snack or an appetizer, then cut them into six. And I'll show you that in a minute. And again, you know, you're going to have a lot of fun with the different fillings. Uh, let the kids assemble these. I mean, they'll have some good ideas on fillings. The, uh, the other thing I like to do, too, if I've got some leftover cooked vegetables or leftover meat, anything in your refrigerator you can put in these. But again, I think, you know, the key is just don't overload them and you'll be fine. Just going to adjust the flame a little bit. And you'll notice, too, I'm noticing here that the tomato, yeah, look at that. Okay, the tomato is going to brown faster than the flour tortilla. I'm not sure why that is, but okay. We'll let that toast up a little bit more. So I will show you now how I plate this. Let's do the tomato. I'm going to turn the burner off. Let's do this in fourths. Just like this. See how nicely, too, doing them in halves like this, you can cut these into nice wedges. So you might say, oh, that looks fine, and we could plate them like this. But 
Look at this. You want to make them look really nice and a nice triangle shape. Get that. Put them on the plate. And these plates right here, they have a nice clay look to them. And I got those at Building 19. And I'll tell you, I get a lot of my decorative plates and platters there and because a lot of them come from closeouts at some of the upscale stores. And you'll be amazed at how much you'll save if you go there and look for certain dishware. Look at how beautiful. Again, you're just toasting them. See how nice and dry? That's why you just want to wipe out the pan with the oil. Okay, now this one, let's, all right, let's plate this one. I'm going to cut this one into six, using more of a snack or appetizer portion. That. See how nicely these cut? Oh, aren't these great? Okay, then again, just. And again, you want to put your salts on after because you don't want to do it before you cook them or it will make them soggy. So in case you were wondering why we didn't put the salts in, and it's nice to have the salts that put that on top and maybe some sour cream. So, Alrighty. Okay. There we go. Let's put a dollop of sour cream. Yeah. You can serve your salsa in little cups on the side or just out of the jar with uh, a spoon. Okay. And in case you're wondering what these ends are for, mmm. These are for the cook. All right, now that we've made the quesadillas, if you're doing these ahead of time, I'm going to show you how to freeze them, and I'm going to show you how they look when they come right out of the oven after they've been frozen, because I froze some earlier, so we can do that. But first of all, I want to show you a method that, again, I learned in cooking school. Now, these are warm. And that's okay to throw in freezer bags now, but they might stick a little bit, so you might have to pull them apart a bit. So what you do is, while they're warm, after you cook them, just put them on a cookie sheet like this. Just like that. Put them right in your freezer. Set your timer for 15 minutes, and they'll be frozen or enough frozen enough in 15 minutes where then you put them right into the freezer bags and they don't stick at all. And I'll, I'll show you that. So now after 15 minutes, look at this. Frozen, the moisture is taken away. You put them right in the bag. Ziploc freezer. Squeeze the air out. Throw them right in the freezer. They're ready to go now. You're ready to bake them off when, you're, when you have time. And now I'm going to show you with my frozen ones, put them in the oven at 350 for seven minutes and how they're going to come out. All right. Now I'm going to take the frozen quesadillas out, put them on a cookie sheet that has parchment on it. Now, this is another tip I'd like to give you. If you've never used parchment paper, start using it now because this is terrific for cookies, any kind of baked goods. It's grease-proof, and you just put it on the cookie sheet, and you will not need to wash the pan after. So this is baking, especially with stuff like this. You put your parchment paper. You can also line your uh, cake pans with parchment. Now, some of you might be asking, well, can I microwave them? I would not microwave any bread products. What happens is the bread gets rubbery and it just changes the entire consistency. These, you put them in the oven, it's a nice dry heat 
and they're going to come out nice and, and firm. Put them in the oven. We're going to time this for seven minutes. All right. Now, while those are baking, I just want to tell you about one of the theme dinners that I did with the quesadillas. I decided, well, my background, part of my background is Greek, so I figured I would call my cafe that evening Aphrodite. So I put together a menu called Aphrodite Specials. And what I did was, for all my guests that attended the parties, I made up a name of a quesadilla. So, for example, Malahan Madness, I used pepper jack ch cheddar, oil cured black olives, which again is another great ingredient for quesadillas, trio of roasted peppers and scallions, uh, Dave's Decadence, I named them Leslie's Delight because my friend Leslie, very health conscious, so that's when I used the wheat lavash and I filled that with light cheddar, again another great cheese, you can use your light cheeses uh, to make them even healthier. Shredded zucchini and black beans I used in that one. I named one Jim's Jamboree, Ray's Revenge, which was uh, pepper jack, diced Virginia ham, scallions, black olives, uh, Myrtle's Inferno. That Myrtle likes things very hot and spicy, so I found a cheese, a hot habanero pepper. I believe Cabot makes that with pineapple salsa and diced ham, so it's sort of like a Hawaiian quesadilla, if you will. And then, of course, I had to add my own Aphrodite's aphrodisiac, and that was sharp cheddar, feta, black olives, spinach, and oregano. So see, I gave that a Greek twist, and in place of the cumin, I used the oregano. So again, with these quesadillas, just let your mind run wild, and you will come up with some great combinations. And as you can see, they're very easy, very versatile, and you can make them in a snap. Ah, all right. These have been in seven minutes at 350 degrees. See how beautiful those come? It's just like they came right out of the pan. Look at that. Yep, nice and dry, not overcooked. Cheese is just starting to melt out of the sides, and there you go. And you know, again, you can make this even easier you want to prep things the night before or a few days in advance or whatever, and then you can see that it takes a few minutes to put these together. Even if you're going to do a theme dinner like what I did, again, I did all that prep work the day before. So the night people came over, I just assembled the quesadillas here with my portable burner, and uh, that was it. It was good to go. Well, I thank you very much for spending your time with me on this first program, and I've got a lot of other foods I want to show you how to prepare, and for my next episode, I'd like to show you some quick and easy appetizers. Thank you very much.